Good morning. It's still morning here. It's 11.45 a.m. Hello. Hello. <laughs> uh, um, first, let me make comment about this. Um, it's kind of neat in a way because... Um, Angry Jonah, huh? <laughs> Interesting name. Uh, well, you, you, uh, I'm addressing an individual who left two comments on two videos under two different channels. <laughs> and I think I have a good idea who you might actually be. But um, recently, recently, on the video uh, refuting that disgusting, lying, vile, wicked, satanic devil, Brandon, um, whose channel is Last Days, um, this individual you, uh, uh, channel, I, I, I blocked and removed his comment and I ain't got time for that. But it was on that video and in that comment that I removed, uh, this individual, under the one refuting the uh, wicked Pentecostal charismatic, of course, and like I said to him before I deleted his comment and blocked him, at least you didn't say I blasphemed the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> anyway, he said to me, have you ever considered that the reason why you're so sick is because you're off doctrinally. And now see, here's the thing. This individual on the two channels has, on the uh, videos addressing Pentecostal Charismatics, has made comments similar to this. And let me tell you something, pal. Okay, you looking at me. You want to talk to me there, pal? I got two emails here on the channel here that you can reach me. And I'll tell you what. You want to talk to me? Go ahead and reach out. All right. I'll give it a day and tomorrow I'll check my spam folder because I have a feeling that you've tried to uh, maybe I've reached out before. I don't know. We'll find out. But here's the thing, pal. When it comes to the Pentecostal charismatic nonsense, look at me, look at me. I have no remorse, no regret. And repent of nothing I have ever said against the wicked, vile, satanic, charismatic Pentecostal faith. I regret nothing and I repent of nothing. You are leading people to hell. Okay? Pentecostalism is very much like her mother, Rome. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots. One of the major differences between uh, Rome and Pentecostalism is that a majority, not all, but a majority of Pentecostals tend to be modalists. Modalists is basically, uh, it is a belief in one God. That's a good start. That's a good start. That is. Trinitarians, three persons, blah, 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 that's, that's, not even, that's not even worth consideration. But <clears throat> the modalist believes one God was the Father and was the Son and is now the Holy Ghost. No, that is what modalism is. That is not who God is, okay? It's kind of... Kind of, but it's not one God masquerading first as the Father, then the Son, then the Holy... No, no, that is not... Any questions about the Godhead, check out the playlist on that stuff that we got on the channel here. Go through it, and also the recent videos, if I remember, I'll put it in the description box, okay? But, anyway, <clears throat> you Pentecostals are liars and devils. Number one... I have yet to meet a Pentecostal charismatic who believes in the redemption of the purchased possession. I have yet to meet one. Is there one out there? I doubt it, but you never know. Okay. Number two. No, 
Number two, you Pentecostals do not rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? Because a lot of you, like that wicked scum, uh, Brandon at last days. Here, let me, let me, let me show you. Okay? I, 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 with you Pentecostal guys who do that nonsense, I, I don't really work at trying to be patient with you. Okay? But you guys don't rightly divide the word of truth. Okay, you do not. You believe, a lot of you guys, especially that Brandon idiot, he believes he's an Old Testament prophet. And you guys believe that the Holy Ghost can come and go, come and go, and you guys do not rightly divide the word of truth. You think that the sign gifts are still available. <clears throat> you believe in satanic blah, 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 which scripture never condones or never even, the languages, the tongues are known languages, not this jibba-jabba, satanic, blah, 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 okay? And another thing, you Pentecostals, I have not yet met one personally, okay? There may be some out there who believe in once saved, always saved. I have yet to personally meet one charismatic Pente Pentecostal that believe. Now, there may be some out there of the Pentecostal whatever who do believe that they're sealed until the day of redemption. But I have yet to meet a Pentecostal who believes in the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? You guys are wicked. You guys are crazy. Okay? A majority of you Pentecostals, yes, a majority, not all, a majority do at least have the right idea going when you believe in God who is one, not three persons, okay? You have that. But everything pretty much else of you guys are wrong, okay? So when this angry Jonah, and that's going to be the title of this video, I like that. I like that. And see that title of your channel that you made two days before you make a comment, just to be blocked, that, that, that shows the pettiness of you people, you devils, okay? It really does. But um, I like that, Angry Jonah. <laughs> um, again, I, I have no remorse, no regret, or no repentance for anything that I have blasted the satanic Pentecostal charismatic faith. You heard me right. And this, this Team Jesus, okay, number one, this is clean. Number one, this is clean. Number two, it's a 3X, okay? And I am aware that the Team Jesus thing is popular for something else, which unfortunately has its link to the charismatics, which I am aware of, which is kind of me because this individual, <clears throat> like I said, he asked me, have you, have you ever considered maybe the reason why you're so sick is because you're off doctrinally? Well, as for what you mean it as defending the satanic Pentecostal stuff, uh, no. No. Uh, no. No. Listen, pal. You're Pentecostal charismatic. You believe nonsense. You don't rightly divide the word of truth. You're trying to take stuff from the Old Testament and make them salvific and doctrinal for us today. Hence, you're a heretic. You're a heretic. But, nonetheless, this thing about self-examination. And see, and, here, and here's the thing there, Hatcha. Um, I personally examine myself daily. I personally have a tight group of dear brethren who will not hesitate to rebuke me when it's needed. And also, you know, I have this living relationship with my Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, and searching the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. And the Lord will often kick me in the stones before a brother or sister gets to it. Okay? All right? And also, as I... And, and forgive me for speaking a little foolishly here, brethren. Please forgive me. Okay? But uh, also, too, when... I make a mistake, 
You can see it. Okay? I don't erase my mistakes. I let them be seen. And I also let the corrections be seen and known. That's very, that To me personally, that's something very important to me. That you people, when I mess up, I'm not going to be like some certain other people that we won't mention, hide it under the rug and try to keep it all hush, hush. I'm not like that. I'm not like that. Okay. If I make a mistake, if I'm off, number one, the Lord's going to correct me. Because you know what? I don't hide from him. I don't hide from him. Okay. <clears throat> number two, I have brethren who genuinely love me who will not hesitate to uh, uh, brag, okay? But yet, Mr. Angry Jonah, and thank you, I'm going to use your channel name for the video title of this. I like that. I like that. I do. I do. And your reference that I am Angry Jonah. Uh, <laughs> okay? But, turn now, sorry for 11 minutes, turn now to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. We're not going to be going through to like in Hebrews about the obvious about uh, chastisement and stuff like that. We're going to look at different areas and uh, also too, very quickly. We're going to be in 1 Corinthians 11. We're going to be reading verses 28 on to the close. Okay, uh, excuse me, verses 28 on to verse 32 in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I, I also got to mention that this will also be a collaborated effort. Thank you, dear brother. That, that was beautiful, that you, what you sent us this morning. The Lord had something in mind with that. Thank you. Thank you, son. If ever, if ever we could have had a son. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 28 on to verse 32 in the authorized version of the scriptures. Get the scriptures. Hey, pal, get the scriptures. Not a Bible. Get the scriptures, the authorized version. Read along with me. Word for word, verse by verse. Be a Berean. Search these scriptures daily, Jack. Do, do you guys do that? Do you read the scriptures daily? Huh? Or do you hide from him? You know, like, uh, like our dear brother reminded us today, um, a reminder. This could be your last day. What if it is? <clears throat> Now, this is talking about what we call communion. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. That is what communion is about. Roman Catholicism teaches you that the Mass, which is their version of uh, scriptural communion, okay, where they eat the wafer cookie that the Jesuit priest does the woody woody and turns it into the actual body of Christ, and the cup of wine, they can, you know, abracadabra, hocus pocus, turn that into the blood. Onto the Catholic, they teach you that communion, what they call communion, the Mass, is salvific, needful for salvation. And to the Catholic, the way they receive Christ is eating him. That is precisely what is taught in uh, the Catechism and referenced even in Vatican II. Okay? That is the teaching of the Roman Catholic Church. Okay? You receive Christ by eating him. <laughs> Nonsense. That is not what communion is about. Communion is reflection, uh, a time of of being with the Lord. It's remembering, too, what he did for you because of you. Okay? But most importantly, 
communion is but let a man examine himself a time of self-examination okay and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself not discerning the Lord's body. And you should hear some of these wicked Catholics take that verse and try to justify uh, the wafer cookie. You, uh, it's disgusting. It's disgusting. Okay? For this cause, and this is what this devil was implying to me. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Dead. Dead. Okay? Now, like I said, when it comes to anything that I have said about the Pentecostal charismatic faith, I have no regret, no repent, no remorse for anything I've said. Because it's of Satan. Okay? Pentecostalism is not the faith that was once delivered onto the saints. Okay? The charismatic way. It's not of God. And I have no regrets. No remorse and no repentance for anything I've said of it. None. None. The scripture rightly divided you twit. I say that with love. Proves your system wrong. Because, hey, Pentecostal, when did the New Testament begin? Some of the you Pentecostals have actually gotten that right. You have, that I've talked with. Some of you have gotten that right. But then again, okay, okay, you got that right. But then when you talk, you don't rightly divide the word of truth. And see, if you rightly divided the word of truth, you would believe in the scriptural truth, the scriptural fact that for today, you are once saved, always saved. I have yet to meet one charismatic Pentecostal that believes that once saved, always saved. I have yet to meet one. Okay? But, verse 31, For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Kind of like what our brother said to us today. It's like, you know, we're, we're supposed to be different. And we as saints aren't to be judged as they are. So what do we need to do? We need to examine ourselves every single... It, it gets wearisome. It gets tedious. It hurts. But you know what? We as saints, that's what we got to do. It is what we need to do every day. Every day. And some people will avoid the Lord. Put, put it on the shelf for something. I know enough. I've read it enough. I've I, I read through the scripture 500 times. Or what was that? What was that guy? Uh, uh, Richling, who said that he's read through it 300 times or something, Jesuit devil. Yeah, yeah. So then what? You take it for granted. Hmm? Hmm. See, I'm afraid of the Lord. I have the fear of the Lord, but you know what? I, I don't avoid him. Do you? There's also two, uh, dear friend. You didn't give one verse of scripture. <laughs> that that's that's something very. Um, that's a trait of a lot of you Pentecostal charismatics who want to defend this nonsense of charismatic. Okay, it's it's a common trait. Or when you do, it's always. Find me where Peter said you have blasphemed the Holy Ghost when someone mocked them for talking in a known language. 
Okay? Give me a break. Give me a break. But self-examination. Self-examination. And see, when we won't see something, that's when the Lord will go, can and will use others. Okay? Because, for if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. And 1 Peter chapter 4, 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 17 and 18. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. House of God, dear friend, is not a reference on to a building. We, the body of Christ, the saints, we are of the house of God. Okay, we are of his house. We covered that, I believe, in Monday's video. Okay, all right, we are of his house. We belong to him. It's not a reference on to a building, which a lot of you Pentecostals also like to go to. And got to remember, I was, for a very short time, I was a charismatic Pentecostal. I've seen grown men crawling around on the floor like they were dogs. I've seen the freak show that is this Pentecostalism, charismatic Pentecostalism, okay? Brad, you're grouping all Pentecostal. You bet I am, because there, though there are those, you Pentecostals, that don't get into the nonsensical showbiz stuff, your core doctrines are the same, generally, okay? So when it says house of God, it is not a reference onto a building. Get that through your thick cabeza, okay? Thank you, part. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, Hmm. What shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved. And then again, people who don't believe in this truth and the doctrine of eternal security will come to this and try to man mangle this into a thing that there is no once saved, always saved. Y'all can go to hell then, okay? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? See, in order to do this, you have to remember first how many are pointing back at you, okay? I, unlike some of these people, uh, do not take the, where the Lord has had me do videos showing other channels and getting on other people. I don't take that lightly. I don't. I don't. Why? Because I am, I beg your pardon, I beg your pardon. I am the one who examines himself daily, even when I don't want to, okay? And when you don't want to, that's when you need to. That's when you need to, okay? And you know, if you are one who has a doctrine that you are holding to that you um, might not be accurate in, what do you do about it? What do you do? You know... It's like, Lord, if I'm wrong, show me. <laughs> Lord, please, I, I, I'm not running away from you. Here, you cut, kick me in the stones, kick me in the teeth, rip my hide off, Lord. Go ahead, show me. Show me. Show me. Show me. Am I wrong? What if I'm wrong? Show me, Lord. See, I'm not afraid to do that. Are you? And when it comes specifically to, for example, a charismatic, any of you, you have not gone to heaven or hell and come back. You haven't. You have not seen God. You haven't. Okay? You have not. 
Paul, who was an apostle, went up to the went up to paradise, the third heaven where God was. And again, did he describe it in great detail? No. What did he say? It is not lawful for man to utter. These people who claim that they have gone to hell come back and then they write a book and they get on. And that one dude was Sid Roth, I think. It's supernatural. That that putts uh, uh, Brandon at that devil last days. In his short section, he had Sid Roth. It's supernatural. That's who that guy was. It's like, dude, that guy's a wicked filth devil. Okay? Listen. Hey, by the way, I'm not denying that you haven't seen something. I'm not. But... You know, you don't go to hell and then come out. You don't go to heaven and come back like Paul did. Okay? You don't. That was for, that happened for Paul. That does not happen today. Okay? Paul was one of the 12 chosen apostles of the Lord. That does not happen today. Okay? Those were all equated for things for the Jews, sign gifts and stuff like that, okay? You haven't seen God. Jesus Christ did not appear to you. You have not gone to heaven or hell and then come back and write a book about it. The Lord rebuke you, lying devil, okay? I know you. a lot of you don't like that, and that's what sets a lot of you off, okay? You haven't seen God. You haven't been to heaven or hell. You're lying, and the Lord rebuke you, okay? But this thing about self-examination, and here's what our brother sent today. Jeremiah chapter 13, beautiful, beautiful. Woke up in the morning with my mind stayed on Jesus and, uh, <laughs> and um, you know, prayer and whatnot. And before I get into devotional reading, you know, I, I try to check the emails and uh, brother sent this email. It's like, oh, wow. Can get into reading with the Lord. And it's like, you're going to use that today, Brad. Okay. Jeremiah 13. We have today. You're not promised tomorrow. Examine yourself. Prove your own selves, whether or not you be in the faith. Know you not your own selves. Verses 3 and verse 7. And the word of the Lord came unto me the second time, saying, Take the girdle that thou hast got, which is upon thy loins, and arise, go to Euphrates, and hide it there in a hole of the rock. Hide it. Hide it. Some of you hiding from the Lord, not examining yourselves. Don't got time. Don't do it. And no brother of ours when we speak. None would. You don't say that to me. I'll go off on you. I'd go off on my, on my best friend. I'd go off on my wife. Well, my wife doesn't know to do that, but it's like, give me an excuse why you can't read the scriptures, at least uh, at least uh, the proverb for the day, huh? Okay? When I was sick, <laughs> okay, when I was horrible, okay, uh, I had, could, you know, I at least read the Psalms and Proverbs, okay? <laughs> Come on, guys. None of your excuses, all right? But... Are you hiding? Are you hiding from the Lord? Some of some were saying some of the reason why some of the saints avoid the scripture is because if they do, having the Lord in them, our Lord is very confrontational. The Lord, that one thing thou lackest, he's going to put his finger on it, okay? And he's going to, you get in the word, he's going to cut you. That hurts. But it's a glory, okay? Because why? Like I said, chastisement that comes from the Lord, the immediate chastisement, you and I cannot see. 
but what the result of that chastisement that bringeth uh, forth uh, fruit unto righteousness or bringeth peace unto righteousness or something. It, that's in Hebrews, okay? After the chastisement, it bringeth forth uh, fruit unto righteousness. It brings peace. One second instead of, okay, peaceable fruit of righteousness. That's, that's, uh, I, we didn't find it, but see, the chastisement that we receive of the Lord will result in visible, peaceable fruit that, of righteousness that leads unto righteousness, okay? So, when we saints are chastened of the Lord, we cannot see the actual chastisement that's going on between uh, the Lord and that brother or sister, because that's between them! But we can see the result thereof. We can Scripture verifies that, okay? And when you want to hide from the Lord, you don't want to read his word? Mm -hmm. Take the girdle that thou hast got, which is upon thy loins, and arise, go to Euphrates, and hide it there in the hole of the rock. So I went and hid it by the Euphrates. Oh, and I went and hid it by Euphrates, excuse me, as the Lord commanded me. It came to pass after many days, many days, that the Lord said unto me, Rise, go to Euphrates, and take the girdle from thence, which I commanded thee to hide there. Then I went to Euphrates and did, and took the girdle from the place where I had hid it, and behold, the girdle was marred. It was profitable for nothing. What if this is your last day? Do you take for granted every day? Hey, we all, we all have moments where we do. But what if this were your last day? You know, I could have a heart attack at any time and croak. I could have a, a stroke and croak. <laughs> stroke and croak. Okay, I can. So could you. So could you. Are you going to take the time today to search the scriptures to, to see whether these things are so? Or are you afraid of what the Lord will say to you? Hmm? That's good. But see, it's a needful thing. It's a needful thing. Ecclesiastes chapter 9. One verse. One verse. One verse in Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Verse 10. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whither thou goest. You have today. What are you doing with it? Are you searching the scriptures? Are you examining yourself? Hmm? Hmm? Do you have, do you really have the stones to be like, okay, Lord, please, this, this, this hurts. And it's hard to do, but, you know, after a while, after you get kicked a couple of times, it's like, Lord, <laughs> show me, show me where I'm wrong. Show me if I'm wrong. Correct me through the word. And give me the ears to hear and the heart to receive correction. Because when you get so gung-ho on something, then the Lord proves you wrong. Whether it's through Scripture, Scripture and a brother, but see, you have today. And today, you ought to dedicate, we as saints, of course, dedicate every fiber of our being unto our Lord and do as he would have us to do today. Because once we're out of here, we go to the judgment seat of Christ. And see, if you're not saved, or you think you're saved, and you're not, what are you going to do with this day? Proverbs 27. Proverbs 27. Verse 1. 
Boast not thyself of tomorrow. For now knowest not what a day may bring forth. And then James chapter 4, verse 14. James chapter 4, verse 14. Actually, let's read 13 on to verse 15. Go to now, ye that say today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. Dance and struts the stuff upon the stage and then is heard of no more. It is a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury signifying nothing. Like Shakespeare. For that ye ought to say, if, and you see this is what you do, take right here, get your little pen, okay, and then, or get your little survey, and then what you do is you take and you circle that if, and go ahead and mark all of that. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. And I also, too, uh, brother, um, I am um, uh, with a video that our brother sent us all. Maybe that might be an answer to prayer. We'll see. We'll see what the Lord will do with that. Okay. All right. You have today. You're not promised tomorrow. How many of you are putting off that thing of going to the Lord? How many is, well, I got time or, or you're hiding or I've had enough, huh? What if this is it? You know, I've often thought about, it's like, you know, man's going to remember me how man's going to remember me. What's more important is how the Lord remembers me. Because somewhere, somebody is going to find dirt. Uh, there is no honor or respect for the dead. You know, or, you know, there will, people out there will come up with stuff posthumously about people and just drive their name into the dirt. You know, that, you know, I know a precious name is better to be chosen than precious silver. I get that. I get that. But at the end of the day, you know, man's going to say what man's going to say. Man's going to think what man's going to think. With the day that you have today, how are you in the Lord? And are you sure? And here's the thing that was accused of me by a Pentecostal charismatic, okay? Do you have the stones enough to consider it? I do. What about you? What about you? Psalm 95. Psalm 95. Psalm 95. The Lord had an intention, brother. And thank you. Kicking and screaming, son. <laughs> Psalm 95, verse 6 on verse 9. Oh, come. Let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today. Today. If ye will hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the provocation as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my work. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation, and said it is a people that do err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. Verse 11. I know I said on verse 9, but whatever. Unto whom I swear, 
in my wrath that they should not enter in my rest. And you can cross-reference this with Hebrews chapter 3, verses 6 on to verse 13. But today, today, you know, when you have heart problems, when you get the biological weapon uh, inflicted with that, with that man-made disease or whatever, uh, and when you have something come upon you as well, um, you know, you learn to number your days. Like it says in Psalm 90. You learn. The older you get, number one, when I die, I know I'm going to go home and be with the Lord. But, you know, that doesn't uh, subtract from the actual facing of death itself. Okay? But see, when I die, I know where I'm going. I have no doubt because I believe the record of what God gave of his son. Okay? And I have the witness within me. I have the father living within me. Okay? And because of that, I examine myself daily. Okay? I examine myself daily. And today, if this is going to be the last day, You know, I'm at the point now where all I care about is that, number one, I don't embarrass my father. And number two, that he and I are on his terms, not mine. That's it. Because once I'm dead, that's it. I'm going to be up there with the Lord. I think a lot of people take for granted death and don't want to examine it and face it. Now, we as saints, like I said, when we die, we're going to be with the Lord. We don't need to fear death except the actual going through it. You know, whether, I mean, if you're going to fall from a plane or going to just have a sudden and go like that, fine, okay, fine, but we know where we're going to go, and then in any given moment, your life is a vapor, are you hiding today, are you going to be the man, are you going to be a woman, and examine yourself, because what if this was your last day, what if it was? Anything that you have to do today, do it with your might, as unto the Lord. And see, heretics will take that and use that as an excuse and a license for sin. And see, if you're examining yourself daily, you can't come to that conclusion to justify sin, just as if I. Okay, that's, a, that's a good one. Let me write that down. Just if I. Okay. <laughs> All right? Because when you get right down to it, especially Christians, you can justify just about anything, can't you? Get the right Bible. Go to the right denomination. And when it comes to it, you have to remember, Revelation chapter 3, just one verse. Revelation chapter 3, one verse. Revelation 3, verse 19. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. And how would you know to repent unless you search the scriptures daily? You know, public opinion is usually wrong. <laughs> usually wrong. We, we, we recently talked about this. Uh, and a video about, you know, public opinion. You know, the court of public opinion. Well, the majority, like I said before in a video recently, the majority wanted to kill Jesus. The majority wanted to go back to Egypt. The majority says that, you know, there are more than two genders. 
The majority says love is love. Let's say the scriptures. There it is. Big part. Big part. Okay? Proverbs 15. And see, here's the thing. And this comes with time. This is something that a babe, it is possible, could be in a babe, but most unlikely. Because you got to, you, you, you know, like it says in Hebrews, having your senses exercised by use. You know, you put your walk into practice. You, you're going to fall sometimes. You're going to get your knees scraped up. You're going to go through things, okay? So in time, as you walk with the Lord and grow in the Lord, it's never, it's, it's never at first joyful to be rebuked. But afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit that leads unto righteousness. His righteousness, okay? So while, you know, not glutton, not, you know, glutton for punishment, but, you know, when the Lord... See, when you're examining yourself daily in the Scriptures... That is giving also chance for the Lord, like, you know, when you're reading something, you stop and the Lord's like, hey, remember what you did the other day? Remember what you thought the other day? Remember what you said the other day? Hey, hey, hey. Like, oh. And how are you going to do that unless you're searching the scriptures daily? Hmm? See, you, you can't trust your feelings, Jack, pal. And charismatics are all about feeling, aren't you? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. That's why they have all that nonsensical circus of Olay stuff going on in their phallus houses. Okay? But Proverbs 15, 31 on to the close. The ear that heareth the reproof of life abideth among the wise. Wise, equated with wisdom. Wisdom is the fear of the Lord. There is another wisdom. There are two wisdoms. Thank you, Father. Two wisdoms. There are two wisdoms. There is a wisdom that is earthly, sensual, devilish. And there is the wisdom that is first that, that is from above, which is first peaceable. Full of good fruits, easy to be entreated. He that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul. But he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. Listen, you wicked devil. The charismatic Pentecostal faith is not of God, it is of the devil, it is of Satan. Okay? The Lord rebuke you. And when it comes to self-examination, personally, I do it every day. And you know what? I make mistakes. I'm wrong. Sometimes, of course, obviously, I'm wrong. And you know what happens? Because I search the scriptures daily and I don't hide from the Lord, I get rebuked. I actually get rebuked. Not often, but here and there, okay? To the scriptures. And like I said, there are brethren, sisters, who love me enough to be like, hey, Brad, 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 can we talk? And you know when a brother or a sister rebukes me? You know what they do? They take me here! Here. Angry Jonah, you didn't, uh, both your things on the two videos, you didn't even give one look of scripture. You expect me to take a guy like you, sir, or a woman, hmm, a guy like you, seriously? Hmm? Yeah, give me a break. He that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul. But he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. And what is understanding? Departing from evil. Right back at you, charismatic Pentecostal. 
On the channel here, we got a lot of stuff refuting your wicked system. But no, you want to go on in your trespass. That's on you. Good luck dealing with that at the Great White Throne. Now, look at this. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. <laughs> and before honor is humility. And what a humbling thing it is to go through the scriptures, examining yourselves. And you know what? That is why a lot of people avoid it. That is why someone would go to a Bible rather than the scriptures. That's why you hear Christians say, get a Bible that suits you. Get a Bible that doesn't cut you. Get a Bible where you can justify women preachers. Get a Bible that's very lukewarmish on sodomy. And like the message, you know, that disgusting thing, you know. Get one of those that where you can find a loophole with love is love. You ain't getting by this, the authorized version. You ain't going to find a loophole. Many try. Many try. And see, they try to get their loopholes every single time by not rightly dividing the word of truth. But you charismatic Pentecostals do not do it all. And like I said, I have met a few that have know when the New Testament began. But yet, they don't believe in the redemption of the purchased possession. The sign gifts are still active today. You, gotta, you just got to have enough faith. Some are better than others, right? Right. And like I said, I have not met personally one charismatic Pentecostal who believes in the scriptural doctrine of today of once saved, always saved. I have not met one. Mm -mm. Don't rightly divide the word of truth. You guys don't have the truth. Some of you do read the scriptures, like that comedian, that uh, yeah, that Gino Jenkins guy. That guy's a comedian. He's entertaining. You want a good laugh? Listen to him talk. He's a charismatic Pentecostal. You know what that rabbit trail here? Beg your pardon. You know what that guy does? And this this just baffles me to no end. In church buildings, you'll have some guy sitting here reading scriptures. And you'll have the pastor over here who himself doesn't have a set of scriptures in front of him, just giving commentary. And that's what this, this comedian, this devil, Gino Jenkins does. Okay? Um, Gino Jenkins... I'm not sure because I haven't listened to him enough. I have listened recently, too. He, I, I was laying here in the bed, and I put on... Gen I was laughing, okay? And it's not funny. It's humorous. The guy's a comedian. He's an entertainer, okay? That guy's pretty close on uh, one on the Godhead. He's right about pagan holidays. The guy is a devil, okay? But, again, this thing where... And the guy who reads the scriptures, and reads the scriptures, the guy who reads the scriptures, um, Jen, that Gino guy, keeps interrupting the guy who's reading the scriptures. And personally, that would drive me up the wall. Okay? When you're talking with a brother or sister and going over scripture and something comes up, that's a totally different dynamic. But you got some guy being a showbiz entertainer like Geno Jenkins, won't even let the guy read the scriptures. Personally, that would, you know, I'd throw a chair at the guy, shut up! Well, no, I wouldn't, but it's like, that would drive me crazy, <laughs> okay? I don't, I don't get that. And that's something that happens in these church buildings. You'll have somebody read in the buildings, you know, Bible, and the pastor goes off and does his little thing. That, what is that? To me personally, that's like, what, what a shoe of arrogance that is on the pastor. 
okay, so-called, okay, I mean, it's so stupid. And, and you can see videos on YouTube where they do this. Some, some dude or dudess will read a Bible and then the pastor dude or dudess will go and blah, 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 blah. What is that? That's stupid. Uh, anyway, beg your pardon. Proverbs 6, verses 20 on to verse 26. My son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. <clears throat> Bind them continually upon thine heart and tie them about thy neck. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. And when thou awakest, it shall talk with thee. For the commandment is a lamp and the law is light. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Okay? <laughs> okay? Yeah, you know, I, I've been rebuked many times by the Lord, by brethren, many a times. Yes. 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 What's the common denominator? Other than, of course, the Lord, obviously. You know what the common denominator is? The scripture. You're going you're gonna to rebuke me? Show me scripture. If I'm just like, hey, I have something wrong. I said something. Okay, come on. I'll get the scriptures. Okay, come on. Show me. Tell me. Please. Please. Lord, show you something and you want to say, okay, come on. Here. Scripture. Scripture. You're going to rebuke me? You want to show me something? Scripture. Give me scripture. Don't give me your feelings, pal. Because I'm not going to take you seriously for a second. Okay? You're going to use a Bible like a, a ESV? Uh-uh. That isn't God's word. That's man's word. Okay? Bibles are man's word. The scriptures, the authorized version, is the inerrant, perfect, given by inspiration word of God. There's a difference. Okay? All right? Go ahead. Scripture, though. Scripture. To hell with your feelings, pal. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light. And where do you find those? In the scripture. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. To keep thee from the evil woman. Rome. Mystery of Babylon the Great. The mother of harlots. From the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. Lust not after her beauty in thine heart. Neither let her take thee with her eyelids. For by means of a whorish woman. A man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. Check your margin if they got a reference for Revelation chapter 17. Most don't. Most don't. But the flattery of a strange woman, Mystery of Babylon the Great, Rome, from whence the Pentecostal faith derives. Just another daughter of the whore. Okay? You Pentecostal charismatics, even though you are usually modalists, and of course, Rome is all that stupid trinity, you're very much like your mother. Psalm 119. Now, I'm going to do something a little different with this. I'm not going to give you the verse, verse uh, numbers. Rather, I'm going to give you the heading. Um, if you do not know what these are, if you have a set of scriptures that don't have that, I'm sorry. Look it up. Okay? Um, learn to 
dissect Psalm 119 through these things, through that, okay? Learn the, the like uh, here it says, Samalach, okay? Samach, uh, excuse me, Samach, okay? Learn how to discern Psalm 119 that way. Psalm 119, Teth. Psalm 119, Teth. Thou hast dealt well with thy servant, O Lord, according unto thy word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I have believed thy commandments. How do you get good judgment and knowledge? Hmm? From wisdom, which is the fear of the Lord, and understanding departing from evil, which will result in knowledge, true knowledge, which leads to judgment. Judgment first, before we can point. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now have I kept thy word. And yes, when you are wrong on something, the Lord can and will afflict you. Whether it's a loving rebuke, or, or yes, physical ailments can come. But see, pal, again, your, the, your Pentecostal faith is of the devil. Okay? All right? It's of the devil. <clears throat> no remorse, no regret, or no repentance for anything I've said against the charismatic Pentecostal faith. Not one regret. And that charismatic also involves water dogs like the Campbellites. Okay? All right? And... When I am wrong on something, the Lord is the one who will correct me. Brethren will correct me. And you know how that, how that happens? Through thy word! Thou art good. God's the only one who's good. And do us good. Teach me thy statutes. The proud have forged the lie against me, but I will keep thy precepts with my whole heart. Their heart is as fat as grace. Well, not everybody has the gift of tongues. Not everybody has the gift of seeing in the future. Not everyone is as blessed as I to have seen the Lord. You can go to hell. You can go to hell. Their heart is as fat as grease, but I delight in thy law. Where do you get that out of? Scripture. It is good for me that I have been afflicted. Amen. See, the longer you walk with the Lord, you appreciate, you are grateful and thankful for a rebuke. You know, it's, it's you know, you know you're on the right path at the least when the Lord loves you enough to kick the stones up into your nostrils. When a brother who you love, who you would trust with your wife, tears your hide off. It's like, oh, oh boy. <laughs> okay? You know that's coming from the Lord, especially when it's coming through the Scripture. And see, like I said, that comes with time. The longer you walk with the Lord, the more appreciative you are when someone, a brother or sister of the Lord through the scriptures, just corrects you and tears your hand off. You appreciate it because it's a shoe of the love of God for you as a saint. Don't forget that. And, and then you can say, after it's all said and done, it is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. The law of thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. 
and Psalm 119, P.E. or pay or whatever. Thy testimonies are wonderful. Where do you get his testimonies? Therefore doth my soul keep them. The entrance of thy words giveth light. Oh yeah. It giveth understanding unto the simple. Could have used that in the previous video, brother. I opened my mouth and panted, for I longed for thy commandments. Again, our a sister that is waiting for us, who um, died, obviously she's with the Lord. Um, all and uh, the testimony of our brother, our beloved, it's like all she wanted on her deathbed was to read the scripture. That's all she wanted. I opened my mouth and panted, for I longed for thy commandments. I don't know how much longer I got to go. But I hope in my dying state that I can at least one more time read God's word. You know? If you're going on a, if you're gonna go down on a sinking submarine. Let me at least read a verse of scripture before I go under. Amen. Amen. Look thou upon me and be merciful unto me, as thou usest to do unto those that love thy name. Order my steps in thy word. To hell with your feelings, pal. Don't you ever trust your feelings. Order my steps in thy word, and let not iniquity have dominion over me. Hold your place here real quick. Psalm of uh, Psalm. Proverbs 28. Proverbs 28. Oh, come on. Well-worn in set of scriptures. <laughs> Proverbs 28. Uh, verse 26. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. But whoso walketh wisely shall be delivered. And you Pentecostal charismatics, you all trust in your heart. Scripture says you're a fool, and the fool says in his heart there is no God. Oh, except for yourself. And you think you're a little Christ. <laughs> Deliver me from, look at this. Look at verse 134 here. Verse 133. Order my steps in thy word. Order my steps. Show me. Show me how to walk today. Rightly divided, of course. Show me how to walk. Tell me. I want to know. I'm not hiding from you. I have only today. I'm not promised tomorrow. I'm not promised what time is it. I'm not promised 12.55. It's uh, 12.54 uh, right now, my time here. I'm not promised 12.55. Amen, brother. Order my steps in thy word. And let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Deliver me from the oppression of man, so will I keep thy precepts. I don't give a... Rats rear end what Christianity is or doing. Like it says in John. Hold, hold, hold your place. John 20. John 20. Hold your place. Hold your place. Or is it? It's, uh, I, it might be John 21. It is John 21. Thank you, bye. <laughs> these, these scriptures are really... It's one of the good things about Cambridge. Right? Ain't that right, brother? John 21, John 21, verses 20 on to verse 22. Then Peter, uh, uh, wait, 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 um, verse 18 on to verse 22. 
Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou wast young, our Lord speaking unto Peter, thou girdest thyself, and walkest where, whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. This spake he, signifying but what by what death he should die, should uh, glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, Follow me. Look at Peter's reaction. Then Peter, turning about, seeth the disciple whom Jesus loved following, John, which also leaned on his breast at supper, and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Peter, seeing him, saith to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Deliver me from the oppression of man, so will I keep thy precepts. What about this guy? What about this guy? What, what, what about him? Jesus saith unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. When it comes to self-examination, when it comes to examining yourself through Scripture, okay, don't be concerned about what brother so-and-so and what sister so-and-so or whatever. When it comes to you and the Lord with your self-examination, with the three fingers that are pointing back to you, don't worry about what anyone else says. Unless, of course, the Lord has guided them and you know, they're, they're the ones the Lord is using through Scripture, of course. But deliver me from the oppression of man, so will I keep thy precepts. Keep, keep your nose here. Make thy face to shine upon thy servant and teach me thy statutes. Rivers of waters run down mine eyes. Because they, Christianity, keep not thy law. Ezekiel 24. This was part of my morning devotional with the Lord. And, um, oh, this is a delicious, delicious chapter in Scripture. Ezekiel chapter 24, <clears throat> verses 6 on to verse 14, and then we will be done. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God, Woe to the bloody city, to the pot whose scum is, in, that is therein, and whose scum is not gone out of it. Bring it out piece by piece. Let, not, let no lot fall upon it. For her blood is in the midst of her, she set it upon the top of a rock. She poured it not upon the ground to cover it with dust. That it might cause fury to come up to take vengeance. Christianity, evil is good and good is evil. The Pentecostals, okay, claiming they've seen Jesus, claiming that they've been to heaven or hell. You lying dogs, you lying devils. I have set her blood upon the top of a rock that should not be covered. Wherefore, therefore, thus saith the Lord God, woe to the bloody city. I will even make the pile for fire great. Heap on wood, kindle the fire, consume the flesh, and spice it well, and let the bones be burned. Then set it empty upon the coals thereof, empty, Empty. Hmm. Then set it empty upon the coals thereof, that the brass of it may be hot and may burn, and that the filthiness of it may be molten in it. Hmm. Interesting. That the scum of it may be consumed. Hmm. Very interesting. Notice in verse 10, fill it up, but after it has been filled, then set it empty upon the coals thereof. 
I'll let you figure that one out yourself. She hath wearied herself with lies. Ooh, bloody city. <laughs> now, of course, contextually, doctrinally, dispensationally, this is reference on to who? This is for the Jews, Israel. Yes, that's what that's talking about. Instruction and righteousness. Ah, there's a bloody, certainly a bloody city. Instruction and righteousness. There is a, certainly a bloody city over there in Rome. You know, the Vatican. Mm. Anyway. She hath wearied herself with lies, and her great scum went not forth out of her. Her scum shall be in the fire. In thy filthiness, Catholic, charismatic, sleazy believest, Calvinist, German Catholic. In thy filthiness is lewdness, because I have purged thee, and thou wast not purged. Get a load of that. Get a load of that. Hold your place here. Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1. You might be looking at that. You, you look at that, okay? You look at that. In thy filthiness is lewdness, because I have purged thee, and thou wast not purged. Thou shalt not be purged from thy filthiness anymore, till I have caused my fury to rest upon thee. Isaiah chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. 4, on to verse 6. Ah, sinful nation. A people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors, charismatic Pentecostals. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. You dudes are lying to people saying, like that Brandon Putz is lying to people, saying, I saw the Lord. He didn't. That's dangerous. Okay? Why should ye be stricken anymore? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick. The whole heart is, the whole heart faint. Now think about that. Think about that in this verse and also in verse uh, 13 in Ezekiel chapter 24. You're so bad. You get so bad to a point where the Lord's not rebuking you. With a saint, you know, if you mess around with him um, to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. But when you're so wicked and nothing is rebuking you. You surround yourself with yes people. Oh boy. Oh boy. That's when the Lord in Jeremiah is like, pray not for these people. Why? Because that's a sign of someone that may have gone past the point of no return. Like with a lot of these atheists, a lot of these devils um, who have gone past the point of no return. It's not that the Lord can't save them. It's that they won't be saved. Because they know in their heart, I've seen the Lord. I speak in tongues. I feel it in my heart. Remember that when you're at the great white throne of judgment, buddy. From the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Go back to Ezekiel, verse 24, chapter 24, verse 14. Let's read verse 13 again. In thy filthiness is lewdness, because I have purged thee, and thou wast not purged. Thou shalt not be purged from thy filthiness anymore, till I have caused my fury to rest upon thee. 
I, the Lord, have spoken it. It shall come to pass, and I will do it. I will not go back, neither will I spare. Neither will I repent. According to thy ways, and according to thy doing, shall they judge thee, Seth, the Lord God. That ought to terrify you. That ought to scare the hell out of you. I could turn this off, get this uploaded, and go out and sit with my wife and die. My wife could be walking Zena and die. You could die at any moment. You could. We have this day. And anything you do, do it wholly and mightily unto the Lord. Are, are you seriously examining yourself daily? Because if you take today for granted, and this day is your last day, then you won't be able to examine yourself anymore after you're gone, will you? The Lord will do that. Very, very beautiful thing to be brought to our attention, brother. Thank you. That is going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this. If you do, thank you, dear brother. Uh, love you. Hopefully this might help one of you or some of you. I don't know. It's Lord's will be done. Gonna get this uploaded. Thank you for watching if you do, and we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Amen.